years in her college. She's had a very successful career as a mortgage broker for 17 years, and she gave it up in 2008 to pursue her love of trading. She became a very successful trader after she developed her own system for trading that relies on capitalizing on the big moves that occur near the open of the stock market every day. She's built an international business that informs clients of how to trade successfully utilizing her system. All right, and Melissa, I can see your screen, so we should be all set. Testing, testing, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Wonderful, thanks so much. Thanks for having me, everyone. Thanks, Renee, for that nice introduction. And yes, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armel, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh, and I focus on only one strategy in the market, uh, which is stocks that are gapping, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So I trade in the morning, that's all that I do, and, and then I'm out. I'm usually out of my trades by 10 o'clock, 10.15, and I don't do anything the rest of the afternoon. Occasionally I take an option trade, but I will tell you that I've found that less is more in the market, meaning the less trades you take, the more money that you can make, and obviously then the less losses that you have. So we're gonna talk today about making money consistently, and that is the key. And I found that the focus is on one thing for me to be profitable. And I think, again, when you're trading, it's not about being a jack of all trades, it's about being really, really, really good and very focused on one thing. It's about taking trades with size if you wanna make more money. So obviously everyone wants to make more, 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 but it really is about putting more size on in your trades once you get to that point when you get good at something. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So if you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. But today we're going to talk about being a trader. You can trade the U.S. stock market really from anywhere in the world. Half of my clients are out of the U.S., so it doesn't matter where you are. And I wanted to put up here at the beginning of the webinar before I start to talk into detail about gaps and what is a gap. For those of you that don't know, you're going to learn something here today. These were all the ticker symbols that I've done in the last two weeks. And I even put in today's, which was HBI. HBI was a, was a short today, yesterday was Crest, Wednesday was PBI, UA was Tuesday, which was a loser, and Monday was TPX, and then I have last week's trades on there too. So how do you make money trading, being consistent? What does that mean? It means you have more winners than losers. If you have more winners than losers, you will make money. Whether or not you get out of the trade at the low of the day if you're in a short or the high of the day if you're in a long or you scalp it or you hold it down for a big move, the idea is not having that many losers. So in the last two weeks, Juniper was a loser. This was last Friday a week ago. And this week, UA was a loser. So there were two losers in the last two weeks of all these trades, okay? So... If you had been trading with me, you would have made money. Why? Because there were more winners than losers. Again, this is common sense, but the thing is that many, many people are looking for this, you know, a golden nugget kind of thing. You're looking for this, this magical answer. The magical answer is you can't lose that often. I mean, that's, and it's just, again, it's common sense. So how do you very often get consistent to pick winners, to do winners, to trade uh, into trades to get into trades and get winners. You have to have a strategy that predicts the direction the stock's gonna go. And that's what I do, I do stocks, okay? I trade the stock market. So my win ratio is, you know, a right around 80%. Sometimes it's a little more than 80%, sometimes it's a little less, but around here. So again, you'd be making money if you were consistently doing the picks that I have. So how do I get these trades? Let's just look at Apple. And the reason I have this up here, this was an option trade I called this week, this was a long. And this was not a day trade, and I don't have it on the stat list. It was an option that worked, but I want to go over it because I want to discuss with you what a gap is. Now, what is a gap? A stock gaps when the closing price of the previous day at 4 o'clock, which in this case was Apple here, okay? This was the night before, and it closed here around 121-ish and change, okay? Then it had earnings. The earnings report came out in the nighttime, okay? Then it gapped up. So a gap is when the stock closes at a different price in the open. Now, in this case, it gapped up. You can look at fundamentals if you want. If you want to study and see and listen to the earnings reports to see what they said about Apple, you can do that. But that's not what I do. I'm looking for the gap to happen. So you wait for the gap. 
In this case here, the stock gapped up. So where did it open the following morning at 9.30, around 127-ish? The stock rallied on the day, went to the dream target, which was 130, and it went over that on the live day. So Apple was a long. You could have done it as an option trade, which I called it for the room, or you could have done it as a day trade. So in this case, you could have done two things, but the strategy itself to lend to the consistency is the same, which is playing the gap. So you can do an option in the gap, or you could do a day trade in the gap. So all the gap is is the difference between the close and open. And stocks can gap up, and they can also gap down. And we're going to look at some gap downs today as well, because for day trades, I prefer to short. But this was the call that I gave pre-market, before 9.30, but you couldn't have taken this trade until after the open in Apple. So the stock gapped at night. I saw the gap. Then I predict that it's going to move higher on the live day. I actually gave out time in this out till next day and next week, but the stock ran up through 130 on the live day. So you could have done that as an option trade, as a day trade. And one of my clients did that. Low of the day on the option trade was 25 cents. He bought it at 44 cents and doubled his money and sold it at 88. High in the day went well over one, as it turns out, because it went over the strike, which is rare, but can happen. Why? Because of the power of the gap. And this is what we're gonna, we're gonna talk about today. But I just wanna show you here in dollars and cents, again, about making money. How do you become profitable? You A, take good trades, but also you gotta book the profits. In this case here, if you had risk 44 cents, which is, you know, he did 40 contracts, which equates to 4,000 shares. The cost of the position he did was not cheap. You don't have to do this much. But it was 1,760 bucks. Selling it at 88, was the right thing to do. Why? Because he doubled his money. So his profit was the same as he risked in one day. If every day you trade, you can flip around your profit that way, you will make money as long as you keep your losers low, meaning not that many. There are 20 trading days in a month if you're a day trader, give or take holidays and things. And some days you will get up and you will not see a pick. I have a system that we'll talk about at the end where I'm rating the gap, but some days nothing meets the criteria. And in which case, what do you do those days? You don't trade. But if something tells you it's a long or tells you it's a short in the gap itself, which in Apple's case, it was a long. And in this case here, you would buy the call. Okay. Or you could have gone long the stock as a day trade. It really is about making good choices when you want to trade. When you're risking your money and, and 1700 bucks isn't anything to sneeze at. That was his decision to risk that much, and it worked out. But any amount of money you risk, 200, 300, 400, 1,000 dollars in a trade, you have to have 100 percent conviction that it's going to work. That doesn't mean that it will always work, OK? It means that you believe in the system that you have, whatever your system is. In this case, for me, it's my system based on gaps. And you know that a certain percentage are going to be losers, and a certain percentage are going to be winners. And you know that you're going to have more winners than losers. And as a result, you're profitable. And that's a consistency. And if you know that, you won't go off the deep end. What do I mean? It means you won't take, you know, 10 trains in one day and blow up your account. Because if you lose in one day, which this week, UA was the loser, you won't train from 9.30 to 4 o'clock losing, 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 losing. Because you'll get up the next day and say, you know what? I'll get it the next day. I'll get it on Wednesday. I'll get it on Thursday. I'll get it on Friday. Because you have conviction in the system. You can't over trade. You can't do that. And not only that, you can't be piggish about targets. So Gibson did the right thing. Although I will tell you, he could have made more because it went over the strike. But you have to chunk it out. Now I have a question here. This was the day of the earnings after the gap it it had the earnings at night sometimes a stock will have earnings at night in which case apple did sometimes it will have it in the morning these earnings reported the night of the 31st so when the gap occurred it was on the first okay so i made the call to the people in the room in the morning pre-market after the gap had happened, but the gap actually happened at night. You see that? Someone asked when, when was the trade called? It was called in the pre-market after the gap, but the gap really happened at night. It was after the earnings, okay? But you can't take options in these things until after they open, after 9.30, which I suggest people to trade in the live day. Now you can do post and pre-market trades, not options, but actual uh, equity positions if you want to. 
but you can't you know really manage them as well as you can during the live day because you don't have as much volume so that's up to you but for the option trades you got to wait to the open okay so the gist of what I'm talking about here is about being consistent so the whole theme of today's talk is not only am I going to talk about gaps in my system I'm really going to talk about this idea about being consistent you know many many people that I talk to do have some basic understanding of charts of technical analysis which is the way that I trade some people love fundamentals that's fine too but a lot of people say well I'll, I'll have a I'll have a good day and then I'll have a bad day and then I'll have three good days and then I'll have a terrible month after that you you have to get a hold of what you're doing right or wrong and figure it out but I will tell you if you don't get the direction right it will be really hard for you to make money like let's just go back to Apple for a second this chart if you shorted Apple which I know absolutely without a shadow of a doubt that some traders did why because some traders don't know how to read gaps and they will see that the stock gapped up seven bucks or six and a half dollars or whatever overnight and they will fade the gap they will think that Apple's gonna fall and fill the gap that's not what happened that's not what I predicted would happen what I predicted would happen did that it would rally I never knew it would get to 130 on the day which it did and went over it but it, you have to get the direction right if you shorted this you lost money and traders did traders did because they don't know how to read this thing they say oh my Lanta they say this is a huge move six dollars plus that happened overnight on the earnings this is going to fill the gap it's going to drop it's going to fall it's too big it's too much it can never hold itself and yet it does and how does it do it why does it do it look at the volume bar down here this this is the volume here this depicts the volume at the bottom and you can see the fatness of the bar this is a candlestick this was a big move for Apple although it's had other days where it's had bigger moves but this is still a big move if you look at from the close to the actual high of the day guess what that's a monster move if the stock closes at 121 ish and the high of the day was 130.50 ish or something like that which it was the stock actually had almost a ten dollar move if you look at it from four o'clock eastern time I'm counting the post market into the pre-market and then into the following day at four so in 24 hours the stock had a ten dollar move that's jimongous people okay and yet it did it how did it do it why did it do it and how can you predict it well I have a system to predict it but why did it do it I don't know whatever they said on the whatever they said in the report and why doesn't matter it got bought but you say well how do you know and what made it do it money huge amounts of institutional money and fund money that came in and decided to buy the stock again I don't look at the fundamentals but when I see the chart because I train based on technical analysis I'm predicting that that gap will gap up and follow through and that's what it did how did it move like that institutional buying you will never have a move like that in ten dollars and 24 hours in a stock like this at this price point without institutions buying it and they did buy it and what I'm saying is that to be consistent to make money if you short this you lose if you buy it you're up and by the way you're up very easily just like Gibson he doubled his money very quickly and whether you did a day trade an option trade it wouldn't matter you would have easily made money going long that stock and you would have you would have been hurt that day if you tried to short it to fade that gap or fill the gap or fill that space which a lot of people do and traders don't know how to trade gaps very often but I figured it out it did take me about three years to figure it out but you can make a lot of money trading gaps because they move like that they do move like that they move up like that they move down like that they have big big moves within the span of sometimes an hour a half an hour or even 24 hours but getting back to what I was saying you don't make money hand over fist by trading all day you have your goal you're realistic about it and you base it off your share size quantity and the amount of money you can risk and then as you get better over time you increase the size so instead of doing you know Apple plus three other trains which may or may not have worked you do Apple and you do it with the size and actually Gibson did because 40 contracts which is 4,000 shares of that stock actually was not you know a small trade that was a good sized trade if you have a, a move of 50 cents with a thousand shares what would you make if you got it in the right direction in the case if you had gotten Apple with a thousand shares and got 50 cents which have moved way more than 50 cents you would have made what 500 bucks okay if you had the exact same trade went long Apple this is it's a day trade if you went long it is a day trade and had 2500 shares 
Apple moved, as I told you, three and a half bucks on the day from the low to the high. So you could have gotten 50 cents out of that. Of course you could have. That wouldn't have been insane. It wouldn't have been a dream number. It would have been very realistic. And you could have captured a 50 cents move in Apple on that day this week and made $1,250. What if you had 5,000 shares and got 50 cents? That's it. Again, low was 127, high was 130.50. Three and a half bucks. All you needed was a smidgen of that, 50 cents. And you could have made $2,500. So do you see here has, has to, this has to do with the share size and your risk? Now, what if you got a buck? If you got a buck, you got 30% of the move, less than that, and that still is a good trade, and it was very realistic. You could have made $1,000 taking 1,000 shares and $2,500 making 2,500. You could have made five grand. You could have made five grand if you took that trade and got a dollar in Apple. You could have made $5,000 if you could have afforded to take 5,000 shares, which I'm sure some of you in here could have. So it is about capturing that move, the quick move, the fast move that happens usually in the 30 minute period, usually into the open, usually between 9.30 and 10 or 10 and 10.30 when the money is coming in and it's solidifying. It's actually solidifying the gap. Actually, I don't have the one minute chart of Apple in here, but, but we'll look at some one minute charts and some other chops. It's when the, when the institutions come in, whether they go long in or sell it, again, we're talking about Apple right now and it went long, but we're gonna talk about some shorts. They solidify the position in that beginning period, which means they're going to sell the stock and dump it, or they're going to hold it like they held Apple in the air and go long it and buy it. Okay, any questions by anyone about anything so far? Okay, I'm going to keep going. So, again, idea of consistency is what? Having money management and stops. I do use stops. You don't need stops and options because you'll only lose the amount you risk. There is no stop in that. It's Whatever you risk, if the trade goes bust and you don't get out or it doesn't work, you lose a whole amount or you get out of it when you're up. Money management is when you take a trade, like a day trade with me, I use stops. I use limit orders and I put the stop in and if the trade doesn't work, then I'm out, okay? But it really is about quality, not quantity for numbers of trades. So again, you have to make more money by having more wins and then you have less losers. And as time goes on, then you'll feel more confident in yourself to, to do what? To not feel pressured. When you have a lost day, like UA was a loss on Tuesday, you won't feel pressured to do anything else. Sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves to, to be profitable every day, you give yourself a break. No system is 100%. And if anyone tells you that, that's baloney, okay? As a trader, you must accept as this that some days you will lose. It's funny. Every once in a blue moon, if I have a loss and I'm upset, I still call my mom and I say, oh, gosh, you know, this didn't work today or whatever. And I'm upset. And she says, Melissa, you know this. You know this about this. Why do we have this discussion? We've had it before. You, you decided to do this thing. You know, this is the what it is, okay? I don't think that anyone ever gets to the point where they feel like excited about a loss. What I'm telling you is you have to understand that that's part of the business. But you also must be very serious about the system you decide to trade, meaning that you have conviction in it and confidence in it, that when you take the loss and something when it doesn't work, that you know that the next day and then the next day and then the next day you're going to be able to win. And someone asked me in a webinar like a week ago or so, well, what do you do if you have a loss and you feel upset? How do you get over it? You get back on the wagon the very next day and you take a good trade and you make money. And that's how you do it. Now let's look at the ones from this week. So again, now we're gonna talk about bearish gaps. What do I mean when a stock gaps down? So here was TPX, this was on the Monday. Stock closed here the night before, boom, gap down. Do you see this here? It was up here around 63, gap down here to what? 46 and change. Stock closed at four o'clock, gap down here at 9.30. Boom, dropped. Look at the volume. Look at the volume of this. So the stock sold off hard on the live day. It sold off. If you had shorted this, you would have made money. If you had gone long this, you would have lost money. You would have easily made money if you shorted it, okay? So what you were looking to do is predict in the morning in the pre-market before 9 30 because this doesn't open until 9 30. okay this is the stock you predict the direction and then you're ready to go you wait to the open 
And then you can do either an option or a day trade in it, okay, to take a day trading position. So in this case here, I predicted it was a short, and it was. Now, here's the one minute chart. This is what you're looking for in the 30 minutes, and this is also part of the consistency. You're looking for this. Do you see this here? It's like a triangle. This is a pivot. See the triangle here? It goes up and then down. So if you're shorting, which I prefer to do, I love to short, and panic happens quickly in stocks when they sell off, and it goes very, very fast, the moves. This is the triangle. You're looking to capture this drop. But how would you know? You must predict that this is going to be a short before 9.30, okay? I don't have the pre-market here, but here's the open. If you can do that, you watch it, you wait, you take it, you short it, you put the stop, you're in, you get the drop. So the consistency is not only in having the winners, but predicting the direction and then watching it. You only need one a day, okay? That also helps you. And then you watch it and you take it and you got to get the direction right. And you want to get this flush. Here's a sell off. Boom. Short it. Boom. You're in. Drops. Whether you get out here, 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 or even here, it doesn't matter. You're up. Okay. Entry in this one here was 46.55. Share size 1500. I'm using an advanced risk for all of these. It doesn't mean you have to risk this much, just so you know. But $1,200 would have been the risk on 1,500 shares. This is not the low of the day. We'll go back and look at the daily chart. But again, you're getting that first morning move where it goes boom. Total profit, over two grand. How many minutes would it have taken you to make this? Again, this is not the low of the day. Look where the stock went. The stock ended up going to 43 and breaking that too. You actually could have made another $2 on this. You could have made another $2 on this same stock. Now, again, that's not what I do. I trade the morning. I like to get in and out in 30 minutes, but I'm just showing you the potential for these things to do and other stuff. Because you could do the day trade, then you could do an option in it, you could do a swing trade. Anyways, here's the move. Boom, boom. Goes to the target, you're out. Like I said, though, it did drop $2 after that, but do you see it pushed back? So you would have been up in here, you know, a good amount of money, and then you would have given some back into the push, and then it dropped again. So I don't like to do this thing here. I just like to take it and get out. So I'm looking to get in and get out in the 30 minute period, but you gotta know what to watch and you gotta know the direction to take it. So I'm predicting where the stock will go in the live day after it gaps. And that's what I do. And why does it matter? How is it, how is it even worthwhile to do? Because you get big moves. That's what I mean. That's what I'm showing you. Like an apple, it had a gap and then it had a big boom. This had a gap, and then it had a big move. On any normal given day, this is a stock trading uh, beforehand, back for the last two months or so. The stock had moves, but could you have predicted any of the length of the body of the bar or the targets or the volume or anything in these days? No, not really, because there's nothing that's really going on in here that's telling you anything that's special. This is special. It's a gap. It's an event that happens in a daily chart that's made by institutional money. It will either follow through in the gap in the live day or it won't. And I have a method to predict that. Because if it doesn't tell me it's going to follow through, then I don't do it. All right? But the point is that it's an event that happens in a chart that's significant. It could be news related. It could be earnings like with Apple. It could have something to do with the election. It could be somebody's talking about something on CNBC. You never know. You never know. But the point is you see the gap and then you predict it. Then you wait, then you take it, then you do it and then you're out. And you do that over and over and over again. So the consistency is finding it, finding it, picking it, taking it, getting in, getting out within the same time period, only doing one trade. Do it, do it, do it, okay? And that's how you make the money. Let's look at the next one here. Any questions? This was the one that was a bust. So what happened here, UA closed and gapped down, open rally. So the stock closed here 25-ish, opened down here around 18 something. High of the day was like 20-ish. So this was not a good short. It was a loser, but I wanna show you, what did it do? It did follow through. It did do it then, but it didn't do it on the day that I did it. And so the thing is, sometimes I will watch something and I will like it and I will do it and I will take the loss. 
but then the next day it works. So this did work as a short the next day and the following day and it broke. And then it broke the low the day of the gap. But again, I like to do the day trains. You can follow through and watch them for continuations, for swings and for options. This was in the long run, in the bigger picture, good short. But on the live day, it was a bust. Now I wanna show you the one minute chart on this. Closed here, gap down. It set up, it set up actually, it went a little, little teeny weeny. There would have been no reason for me to get out and I didn't, but I did take it and was up. And I had time to kill it, but it, there was no reason for me to get out of it. I was only up like 15 cents or something like that. And I just don't scalp really. Some people in the room did get out of it here. Anyways, a base, 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 and it popped. And it went over the high and then it never worked. It didn't work at all, but I wanted to show you here how it did after. So this was a loss. So the entry in here, 1969, again, if you are doing an advanced size, okay, you would have taken 3,000 shares, you would have risked what? 1,200 bucks. So you would have lost, you would have lost $1,200 on this trade. So that did not work. And this is what I'm telling you, sometimes something will not work. So if you make money on Monday and you're up and you take the loss on the Tuesday and you're down, you would have still been up for the week. Going into what? Going into Wednesday. Wednesday was just a ridiculous move in this thing here. Um, I had numbers written down for this. I usually figure out resistance targets, everything. This went to numbers I never even thought it could go to. The stock open high of the day was like 1508 or something. The low in the day was 1240-ish, I think. Again, this is a massive sell-off. How can you make money trading gaps as a strategy? Because you have huge institutional moves. And in the case of this, it got sold off. How do you make money? You make money shorting selling action or you make money going long buying action. And that's, that's how. Otherwise, the stock doesn't move or you're scalping for pennies and you can't really get anywhere with that. You'll never make thousands of thousands of dollars in the day or the week or the or the year doing that unless you're taking massive size and you're, and you're scalping literally like taking 20, 30,000 shares or something and scalping it for a couple pennies. That would be very stressful to do. Bottom line is you want something to move and they do in gaps. This was an event. The stock closed the night before up here at 16 or 15 something it was. And then it gapped down. So here we have it, boom. And, and I have a system that rates it to determine if this is a long or a short. And I determined it was a short. So the stock moved massive. Literally the first target was 1450. And if you get out the first target, you, you would have been doing nothing wrong. <laughs> but the stock literally just sold off for uh, like two hours. I just want to show you this here. So here was the entry. And you literally could have gotten out of this at the first target. But if if you held it, I, I don't know, you know, if you would have, but if you did, again, this is not something that I did or would have done because it just, you know, it just kept going and you never would have known it would kept going, but this went to ridiculous number. So from the entry up in here, literally it was like 1489, the stock went to 1240. I mean, you can't, you can't fault yourself for getting out of this here in the morning. Again, the way I like to trade is get the morning move. And when they start to back up, which this did in here, you got to take it. But the stock kept dropping. So again, this is a great example. You're shorting selling action. This is what selling action looks like. But the entry was here, right here at 931, right into the open here. So if you don't take this, you know, where are you shorting it? Where are you getting it? And then where are you putting the stop? If you short this like in here around 1430, 1420, your stop is way over here, you know, 80 cents a dollar. You know, if you want to risk good size, you're risking a lot, not knowing that it's going to go like it did. You know, you have to look at the actual chart and what is going on here previously in the bars to determine where you think this could go. Do you see though, this is the biggest bar in the chart. So you, you wouldn't have been able to predict the low here. But you would have predicted it would do something good, something big, something reasonable, something that it normally does or greater. Why? Because of the gap, because of the event in the chart. Okay. So huge sell off here. I have something I teach in my class. It's called the stock swoosh. I, this is, this is like a new name. It's like a super swoosh. It just opened and collapsed. 
So anyways, if you shorted this at around 1490, 1489, again, same risk should be, your risk should be the same in all your trades. This also helps with the consistency. Whether you get out of the target or not, it doesn't matter, but the amount of money that you risk should be the same or equal to in all the trades you take. You can't risk $500 in one trade and $2,000 in another trade, you won't have the same results. Because if one trade works and one trade doesn't, then your results will be screwed, you know, skewed. So the risk was 1,200 bucks. Exit 1450. Again, this is if you have an advanced risk and got out the first target, what would you have made? You would have made $1,600, okay? This is getting in here and getting out here, but it collapsed, okay? So this one worked in the direction of the gap, as I predicted. Now, let's say then, so you had the loser and the Tuesday. Say you did Wednesday, you made money. Thursday, you get up, you're ready to go. Guess what? You got another good one. You rate the gap. The gap was crushed. This was earnings. Close the night before up here at 64, gap down to what? 56.50. Again, what happened here? It doesn't matter, people. What matters is it's gapping. And then I have a system where I rate the gap to predict where it's going to go. This could have been a long. On to the support. This is a 50 period moving average. This is a 20. At one point in the morning in the pre-market, it was sitting snug as a bug in a rug on the 50. It didn't hold it. It ended up opening here at 56.50. Rally touched it. Look at how it touched it. And then it collapsed. Okay. Look at the volume. Down here's the volume, the previous days. Even this day here, which is a massive bar, did not equal the volume on this day. Okay. So here was this one. This is a one minute chart. Previously was a daily. That's how I'm predicting the gaps, but I'm taking the entries on the one. Stock closed here, gap down. Open, you could have hit it here. You could have hit it here. You gotta get in, you're in, boom. Look at how this open rallied. Look at how it open rallied again. I have my stop up here. Some people are looking at this to go long. On support to fill the gap and on support, I'm shorting it, I'm in it short. I'm pennies from being stopped out. And I guess I end up being right, and guess what? I am, and it goes and drops and works. So you're playing this move in here. Again, between 9.30 and 10. 9.30 and 10. It, did it go longer? Yes. This continued. Low in the day in here was around 54-ish. I did not hold that that long at all. You want to get that morning move. You get in, you get out, you take the money, and you run, and you're done. Okay. Actually, no, here, this is wrong. It should be 56. I wrote the wrong number here. Although it did go to 55. Um, let me have a uh, question here. Go ahead. How do I pick which gap to use? There's hundreds and thousands of things that gap. Like in the morning of this day here with the crush, there was tons and tons of gaps. So I scan in the morning. I look for everything. I make a watch list. In earnings season, you have more gaps than not. But bottom line is I will rate them. I will rate the ones I find, and then I will do the one that rates the highest. I have a 26-point rating system, and then the, whichever one rates the highest, I do. It's got to meet the criteria of 20 points or more. If it's 17, 18, 19, I'm not going to do it. If it's 20 or more, then I'm looking to do it in the direction of the gap, whether long or short. So I find them on a scanner. You can find them in yahoofinance.com. You can print out the earnings calendar. They'll tell you about Apple and all the other ones like Crest. And then you can rate anything that gaps anything ups downs whatever but I focus on the shorts okay now going back here and this did go and break this but I meant 56 here for the exit because this was the first morning drop so if you took 2,000 shares and risked 1160 and exited into the first drop into the dollar you would have made 97 cents you would have made 1,940 bucks but you you actually could have made again two dollars more in this exiting at 56 because it dropped down to 54 it dropped two dollars after the morning exit but i i really 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 like to just get in and get out and just get in and get out i mean that is just what i like to do for me personally the 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 way that i train the the way that i look at things my personality i don't have the patience to hold <laughs> if you know something for like two three hours i just don't um, and also I find that when I trade the morning and I'm in and out quickly, it, it, the market hasn't really set its tone until after 10 o'clock. So usually the market will do something. If it's really bullish or it tends to be bearish, 
usually takes some time. It takes some time for it to go and get going and really do something, okay? And that's why a lot of day traders actually don't even take any trades and look or scan until after 10. But the way that I do it, the niche that I have, the edge that I have is the prediction I'm making before 9.30. I'm not waiting till after 10. I'm not waiting to see what this is gonna do. I'm predicting this is gonna drop. Boom, let's get in. And we do it and we're in. And we're in it and we're out, okay? My edge is that I can predict the direction it's gonna go after I see the gap. I can see the gap at night. I can see the gap in the morning in the pre-market, but I have to know when I'm watching and looking and make it the prediction before the open so that I have it set up and I'm watching and I'm, and I'm there to do the trade right as it's going. Because this is what happens, people. This thing, if it wants to get sold off, which it did, and how do I know it did? Because I saw it, there it is, it dropped. It ran up, retested the high of the day in the first five minutes of the day and broke. Broke the low and fell and fell all day and closed red and drop, drop like a brick. And another one that went to a target I didn't even have written down, okay? So if you got the direction right and shorted cross, you made money. If you went long it, you lost. And some people did because they read this and didn't know what to do and think the stock is gapping into support, but it's not right. It's not right. And how do I know I have this system that I used to rate it? It did take me, like I said, three years to figure it out, but this is what you have to focus on, some kind of system. You can't just say, well, it's, it's into support, I'm gonna buy it. No, it's a gap. It's different. It's not like a regular normal day where the stock is holding support or whatever. Anyways, this was HBI. What did this do? Well, it closed here, gap down. Boom. This was today's. Actually, this had two drops in the morning quick. It pushed back fast. I missed the first exit. I ended up getting out of it. I could have made more. I'll show you what this did. Anyways, the one minute chart is here. Closed gap down. I didn't get this. It broke really, really hard. This is a buck. Some people in the room got it. I didn't capture this. It went so fast, I didn't get it. Anyways, it worked. Then it rallied back. Then I took it here. Then it dropped again. <laughs> I was in this and I didn't get out in here. So this broke in here. Hit 19 something. I waited, 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 waited. I eventually ended up killing it in here. So I could have made more if I'd gotten out, but it bounced so fast I didn't, and, but that's life. But some people did get out here, some people did get out here. I don't know where the people that held it with me got out. In fact, I think it was still ended up working, but I was out of it. So this one I held a little bit longer today only because I missed the, I missed the exit because of the bounce. And some, sometimes it happens, but not often. Anyways, entering this was 1948, share size 2000, risk again, 1140. They're about 1,200, whatever. This is not an exact science. 1,500 shares, 2,000 shares. Depending on the stop, it could be three or 4,000. Exit, again, I made what I made on this. I missed the drop of the break into 19. 1932, although it could, it could go there before the close, but I'm out. Total profit, 340 bucks, okay? But it's profit. So if you had done all of these, you would have made approximately $1,000 a day and that is real money. Why? How, no matter what you risked, okay, if you didn't risk an advanced amount, if you risked half the risk in all these trades, you would have made 2,500, that's still real money, people. You're still up and many people are losing. And why? Why are these results so good? Forget the dollar signs, it's, it's profit. It's one plus, negative plus, plus, plus. So it would be impossible for you to be down. No matter whether you risked a thousand dollars in the trades or two hundred or three hundred or four hundred or five hundred, whatever your money is, it would be impossible for you to be down in the week. You'd be up if you had traded with me. So the bottom line is that how is this possible? Because you pick, got to pick the winners. How do you pick? How do you pick the winners? You 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 determine the direction. You determine the direction the stock's going to move before it goes. If you can determine and predict the direction a stock's gonna go before it goes, you can make money. You can make money doing swing trades, option trades, day trades, anything, anything in the world. You can take a trade and you can get in something and you could be in it for years. On YouTube, I predicted years ago that the market would continue higher, make brand new all-time highs. It has done it. It has done it and it's gonna to continue to do it. People are predicting the market's gonna crash or it's bearish or it's gonna fall or something. It's not. 2017 is gonna be a very bullish year. It's been already and it's gonna continue. And I'm making a prediction now. I'm making an overall general big prediction based on my analysis of the QQQs and the SPY, which I read the ETFs of the market based on the gaps that I've read of the market, the bearish gaps and the bullish gaps. And I predicted this for the last few years. It's on YouTube if you wanna go look at it. 
at the time I remember no one believed me. In fact, the last time I think I was here, it was March, I think it was March 2014 or 2015, I was here with you guys. I was here with market traders. And I remember at that time, I predicted what the spy would do. And I think people were asking me, and no one believed me. If I had been long the market for years, which I wasn't, I wasn't, I would have made so much money, but I don't do overnights. But I'm telling you, you can make money trading. It is not beyond the realm of possibility, but you have to be able to predict, predict it before it happens. And you have to be able to predict it accurately. <laughs> I mean, you can't, if you were short this market, you lost, okay? If you were long, you're up. And, and I'm telling you that people are gonna short this market right now and they're gonna get their hands, you know, their, their, their shirts handed to them or whatever. They're, they're going to, people are, what's gonna happen is, here I'm making a quick prediction, we'll go on. What's gonna happen is people are gonna short this market somewhere. I don't know where, 230, 235, maybe they'll wait to 250, I don't know. People are gonna short the market at a certain level, I'm talking about the SPY. And then it's, it's not gonna work. It might pull back for a little bit, then it's not gonna follow through, and then it's gonna flip. Flip over and make another new high, okay? And then people are gonna say, well, this is it. No, this is the level, this is it. This is gonna hold here. And then people are gonna short it again. It's gonna push over it and push over it and push over it. And this is what happens, okay? And then the volume keeps coming in in the direction higher because why? How is it happening? Because volume's coming in, because the people are buying the market. The market would never be at these numbers. The market is rallying every day since the election, every single day almost, it has, it's, we've been higher. We've had some red days in there, but overall the price point since November, we've been almost straight up vertical. And the days that we didn't go straight up, we just kind of sidelined and based, okay? And we rested just to go higher again. So I'm not saying we never pull in, but I'm telling you, we're not in a bearish market. We're in a bullish market and look for it to continue. And the volatility will continue because people are expecting, the expectation is that something can't keep going. wrong -oh. Yes, something can keep coming. It can keep going. PBI can open at 15 and keep going into the close and drop to zero. It almost did. It went to 1240. I never could have predicted that, but it did. Something can keep going in the direction, and it will until it decides not to anymore, which no one can predict when that is. But you don't play it in the opposite direction. You play it in the direction that tells you it's going based on the gap. And those are the only days I trade. I don't trade any, anything other than gaps. I don't take a trade in a stock just in the trend direction. I, I only take things to gap. Anyways, it only takes a couple of hours to a week to do this if you want to do it. And if you want to be successful, you have to have a strategy. You have to have a strategy and you have to learn how to do it. And I have a system. I have a system that I do and I, I'm in and out in the morning. I showed you some charts that went past that point, but I typically don't hold them. Today I held that thing you know, longer than I wanted to and I wish I would have got out in five minutes. So it's really about that morning time period. And that's what gives me an edge. I do it, I do it in the morning, I'm in, I'm out. And it's because of the institutional move that I'm looking for that the gap works. Does anyone have any questions about anything? It, you, you've gotta get that fast, fast push because that's how you get the profit. And that profit, when it comes in, you wanna get out. Many, many times when I'm taking a train, it goes right into the money. So whether you scalp it or hold it, it's up to you. You could almost take it and put the stop at break even, even if you want to. But you have to act like a professional with what you're doing. And it's really never over to the fat lady sings, which means every trade you take, you're at risk for the, a potential loss until you get out with the money. And that's the fact. And every time you take a trade, you have to believe that it's gonna work or you don't take it. Don't take crappy trades. Don't over trade. Think about what you're doing and why, okay? It is very, very important to think Think, think, think. Why would you short Apple? Because it's gonna fill the gap? That makes no sense. It makes no sense. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like you have to think, think, think. You have to think about what you're doing. A lot of everything that I do is based on common sense. Common sense, common sense. Okay, what's happening here? Look at it, think about it. I just use the top 20 list, the top 20 list, which gives you 40 picks in the NASDAQ and the New York Exchange. You can get them on any, pretty much any software for free. I don't pay for a separate extra scanner if that's what you mean. You can, you can if you want to, you could. I find it's overlap, so I don't have a, a separate scanner. Anyways, what makes gaps profit, profitable are the predictable moves, the big moves, the fast moves, 
And like I said, I like the fact they happen quick. So my class, my system is based on 26 points. It's a checklist. This is what you would learn from me if you want to come and be mentored by me. I teach you the points. It's based on the daily chart. That predicts the direction the stock will go. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade and when. This system is so powerful, and, and I created it. It took me three years of my life, but it identifies what an institution is going to do on the live day with that stock, buy it or sell it, okay? And you can do these for options trades. You can do these for long-term trades. This is a trade that uh, another trade in Apple, I stuck it in here because it was another Apple one. It was an option trade that another student made over five grand in. This was in October. This was when Apple had a big move in October of 2016. Some of these high flyers, Google, Amazon, Baba, Facebook, Netflix, um, some of the expensive stocks, you can, you can really do well in options if you get it right, okay? And they're very expensive to, to day trade. But the success or failure of what you do has to do with your system. The system must tell you that it is a quality long or short, okay? I'm looking for a specific time frame to do them. And if you want to make money trading, I'm telling you that you can. If you have been losing, then stop and consider what your strategy is. Are you losing because your strategy doesn't work? Is it a bust? Or are you losing because you are doing things that you shouldn't be doing? like over trading, holding to piggy targets, not thinking about your sizing, taking risk in something that you shouldn't be taking. For example, if you have a $5,000 prop account, you shouldn't be risking $1,000 in a trade. That's irresponsible, okay? Any questions so far? So what my checklist does is predicts that it's gonna have a big move, like I showed you on all the ones here. The early confirmation of the move between 9.30 and 10, Precise entries of follow through and a good risk reward target potential, and that's important. It doesn't mean that I hold everyone to the target, because most of the time, if it doesn't go to the target in the morning, I'm out. But you could. You could hold some of these to the target if you want to. You must have a plan of action to be successful and consistent. For me, it's my rating system. I get up in the morning, and I rate the gap. Every day, I fill out the sheet. I rate it. Then I pick one. One, I want to focus on watch. Today, I had the right pick. Again, I usually do. HBI. Boom. Get it. Do it. You're in, you're out. You have a goal every day. Does it mean that you make your goal every day? No. Today, obviously, I made a couple hundred bucks. That's not my goal every day, but I made money. On average, for the week, I'm up, okay? You have to chunk it out. Some days you're gonna make more than you think. Some days you'll make less than you think, but your idea is to win and to keep the losses small. But one strategy is really all you need to be successful in the market. So if you find what I've said interesting today, you can reach out to me. Um, I'm very good at making predictions that a stock will go in the direction of gaps. So you have to wait till it gaps. I don't predict the gap. I wait till it gaps and then I rate it and then I take it. Okay. And it, it does cost money to come and take my class, but in the end it saves you money because if you don't know what you're doing, you will lose money in the market. And your money will be on limited losses if you keep trading and not knowing what you're doing. And many people do this and it's hard for them. It's hard for them and I feel bad for people when I talk to them, but I say to myself, if people don't know what they're doing, why are they trading? You know, getting ideas off of websites or the internet or television shows, how, how do you know why that person is even calling the trade? I have a live trading room, but in order to be in my live room, you have to have taken my class. You have to believe that the trade's gonna work and understand it and have a full understanding to trade with me in my room. If you want a trial to the room, you can email me, you can have a trial for the next week, but in order to be in the room full time, you need to understand what to do because you are risking your own money to do this. It is realistic to make a living trading, however, you must be in a full on strategy system that consistently works and you have to have a plan of action for what you're doing. It must be implemented daily, and you've got to have your head on right, okay? If your head is screwed up, and your head isn't on right, and you don't understand why you're doing something, or you don't have conviction in your system, or you don't understand why things aren't working, or what mistakes you're even making, or you don't even believe that you can make money in the market, then your head isn't on right. And this does affect what you're doing. I talk to people all the time, 
who have been hit over the head from losses in the market or taking classes and they didn't get their money's worth, then, then maybe you need to take a break. You do have to have a positive and optimistic attitude to do this because you have to understand that some days, like Juniper and UA, they didn't, the trades didn't work, okay? And if you're going to you know, fall apart because one trade or one gap doesn't work, then you're not cut out to do this. It doesn't mean you don't say, oh, that sucks, you know, whatever. Of course it does. But if you're making money the whole week and the whole month, then who cares? All right? It's part of the, it's part of the job, I guess. But it is a nice job if you can do it and work from home. And I, I trade out of my apartment. I live in New York. And I have been, you know, working from my home for all the last eight years I've been trading, which is great. So if you're interested in my class, you can email me. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's one strategy. And it's a good time to trade because there's a lot of stuff. Things are moving. And things are even selling off, even in the bullish market. I mean, nice sell-offs. I mean, I can't believe some of the targets that these things have gone to. So the class is next weekend. Uh, my class is February 11th and 12th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Cost of the class is $49.99. Retakes are free, which means if you sign up for the class, you can retake it anytime you want to for free after the first time. And I'm offering a special for this webinar. If you want to sign up for the class, um, if you know you want to do it, if you're interested in anything I had to say, you can sign up by tomorrow or an early bird special for the webinar I'm offering, which you can have be in the trading room free to the end of June, which is a great deal. So you'd be in the room February, March, uh, April, May, and June. That's five months in the room. You'd get all my calls, like the ones in the last two weeks. I went over the last week of calls in here. And you take the trades and you do them. But you do have to learn how to do the system to be in the room. And, and, that, and that's part of taking it seriously. If you make a commitment to spend $5,000, then you are committed to trading and making money, and you're committed to being in the room and getting up every day and being there. And I only have the room open from 8.30 to 11, and I usually don't even keep it open to 11, because I'm usually out of my trades by 10, 10, 15. So I get up, I do the prep, I go over the gaps, I write the gaps in the room, I write the ratings and the picks, and we do the trades, and I call the trades live. It's usually one, maybe two things I'm watching. I usually prefer to do only one. And then we review the trade, and we're done, and we're out. And that's it. Any questions from anyone about anything, anything at all? And if you're interested in more information, email me. If you want a trial for next week, email me. If, you're, if you want to talk about any stocks, you can email me too. We have a few minutes here. How's everyone doing? Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy weekend. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Thank you so much for having me, market traders. Thanks for having me back. Thanks, Renee. Good group of people here today. We're keeping you busy. <laughs> the price for the class, here, I'll go back. Nick asked, $49.99 for the class. And you'll get the room free to the end of June. I only do one strategy. So I teach this one main class, that's it. I don't do anything other than gaps. And I don't think I ever will because this works. So and I love it. And I love the I love the fact that I'm done and out in 30 minutes. If I want to be, I mean if I want to hold something longer, I can, but again, that's very rare. So this the system, you know, the timing of the system works for me. Personally, it really works for me to um, you know, my personality. I just don't have a lot of patience. So I love when something goes and drops like a brick and I can get out of it right away. Any questions from anyone else? You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you want to trial, if you have questions about anything I said today. And you can go to my YouTube site. It's www.youtube. You can put in the stock swish and look me up. And I have tons of, tons of room videos in there of the trading room, plays of the days, other webinars and stuff. And you can learn some more about, about what I do. But uh, trading gaps is fun. It's exciting. It's interesting. I think trading the market is exciting right now. It's an exciting time. 
It was exciting before the election. It's exciting after the election. The market is very volatile, and I expect that, that it will continue. Uh, the market is bullish, but stocks that want to sell off are doing so, and they're doing so at a rapid rate. So all of that, all of that heightened volatility makes for opportunity for traders to make money if they know what to do. Oh, I just realized I have 2016 here. I meant 2017. <laughs> I'm still in last year. <laughs> Let's go back to the holidays. All right, have a good day, everyone. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you.